Alright guys, Paul the Car Guy here, back with another video. If you didn't check out my last video, check it out. It's in the comments below. Otherwise, we're looking at a 1963 Studebaker GT Hawk. Right over there. Alright guys, here's the 1963 Studebaker Hawk, or GT Hawk, uh, Gran Turismo. Uh, this has a 289 cubic inch uh, V8, and um, let me tell you a little bit of background before we go over uh, the looks of the car. Uh, there was only about 4,009 that were sold in the U.S. in 1963. Um, currently, there's only about 900 that are known um, on the road, so they're pretty rare. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure at the time the average gas price per gallon wise was uh, 28 cents, so it was much of a different time. Um, this was built pretty much to uh, compete with the Ford uh, Thunderbird and the Pontiac Grand Prix. Um, obviously, this was a little, wasn't as uh, popular as the two. Um, might have been in marketing and stuff, and also Pontiac and Ford. Um, probably had a little bit more of a competition between themselves there. Um, at the time, magazines were raving about the vehicle here. Um, they didn't think it was a well-built car. It just didn't, I guess it didn't build up enough traction at the time from what I, I read in um, some reports. But you guys can check out the engine bay here. And uh, yeah, I mean, this only has about 55,000 miles on the odometer. And the vehicle weighs approximately 300 uh, 3,285 pounds, so um, relatively it doesn't weigh that much as you would think, especially with the heavy metal, um, even the grill is made of uh, made of metal there as well, so unlike new cars today. Uh, to give you pretty much a relatively, uh, say, weight, um, weights for vehicles, my 2011 GTI has a uh, pretty small it's a 2.0 turbo um, and yeah my car weighs only about 3100 pounds so this is actually pretty light and considering how much metal there is and having a v8 um, I guess electronics put some weight in there and all the airbags and stuff but otherwise this is relatively light let's go around the vehicle here um, obviously it's still uh, factory rims there and there was no AC at the time in 1963 so these were the vents here. They would open up and air would go, open up this way. Air would go in and that would be kind of like your AC there. Um, obviously all the windows roll down. And let's hop on towards the back here. Here's your gas. And then on the rear, like I said, if you want to check this out, this is aluminum here. Um, just to let you know for the metals. Um, I've, if, I, if you didn't watch the previous video, this is my girlfriend's grandfather's car, so he gave me some insight on the vehicle here. So um, this is um, stainless steel for this trip here, and I'm sorry, this is uh, stainless steel, this is uh, chrome, and then this is uh, aluminum. So just a little bit of different metals there, um, just to show you guys. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, this is 1963, so it still has the key fob, or uh, you would have to use the keys and just the, on how to open it if you guys want to check it out real quick. I'm going to hop in on the other side, but just a quick little tour. The original color was a uh, light blue. And let me hop on the other side. Like I said, the looks of this car is amazing. Especially, I mean, it's still timeless, so which just makes it pretty awesome. And uh, let's hop in over here. Now I'm going to give it the, uh, see how the back seats are. So, um, by the way, before I continue, this is on front of a magazine. Right there is, is the vehicle there. So, um, this was pretty much an international Studebaker meet. Um, and her grandfather was on the front paper of this. But to get in the back here, it is a five-seater, which is pretty awesome. And I'm going to hop in the back. 
let me lift this up. Now I'm about close to six feet tall, and I still got some uh, leg room. Um, obviously with five people in the back, um, there's a little divider in the back, so um, there's, let me show you this. We got for uh, cigarette ashes, we got two in the back, even on this seat, and we have one in the middle in the front. Um, at the time it was uh, pretty much a social thing, it was more of a common thing at the time. And also, if you want to bring a camera in here, see the vinyl on the rooftop? Sorry, there's a mosquito in here. And also, there's one light in the back here. So just to show you guys that bad boy. And like I said, all the windows roll down. I'm going to hop out of here. And I'm going to hop in the front. Show you guys a cool few things. Obviously, like I said, the AC back then would be the uh, windows, which is for just rolling down. This is how you open up the door. You just turn it to the left. Um, keys. Uh, you got the lights, the instrument lights, uh, your defrost, your heat, your wipers, and some of them had uh, air conditioning at the time. Not anything advanced, but like I said, if you want to bring the camera closer, this has 55,000 original miles. Um, and then the gauge cluster is pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. You got the clock over here. Um, you got the water temperature, the amps, fuel, oil pressure, and the RPM. So um, pretty much all the new cars have all that good stuff too. So, um, but yeah, and then you know this only had AM radio. It didn't have FM. Um, and if you'd like to see this over here, sorry about that. This here says, please fasten seatbelts. And it's a little bit of a joke because 1968 was when seatbelts were required. So in 1963, there was no seatbelt. So as I sit in here, there's not the, no airbags, of course. And also, if you'd like to bring the camera over here, you got park neutral drive low and reverse. So it's a little bit different. Usually, you know, you're used to drive all the way at the bottom and reverse more towards the top. Um, <clears throat> gauge cluster's a little different there. And yeah, like I said, I mean, there's a few things that are pretty much timeless in the vehicle. Um, I like the red and black in here. And yeah, it's very nice. And even the seats are very comfy. So um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, just kind of pinpointing a few different things for you guys, kind of getting a perspective for it. And now, actually, I'm just going to start up the vehicle here. Whoops, sorry, I'm used to the keys on the right here, so. Um, let's see. There you go. You want to hear the exhaust in the background? Um, does leave a nice rumble. Um, I was going to have it running throughout the whole video, but obviously you guys wouldn't be able to hear me as well. Um, this is my first time starting it. I feel privileged. Um, obviously a car like this, I wouldn't let anybody sit in, so this is awesome reviewing it. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, hopefully I gave enough information for you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it's pretty much to go off of this video for the Studebaker. Timeless car, perfect. Rare if you see it, only 900 still on the road today and very clean, very mint. Um, so, uh, yeah. Otherwise, guys, thank you for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, notification bell. And, yeah, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Paul the Car Guy. Otherwise, guys, I'm going to catch you in the next video.